Welcome to the vignette Reproducible Meta-Analysis. A reproducible meta-analysis is a well-documented meta-analysis for which we have sufficient information to be able to reproduce it the same way that the authors conducted it. Why do we want a meta-analysis to be reproducible? First, knowing exactly how a meta-analysis was conducted allows us to evaluate the quality of a given meta-analysis. Is it an exhaustive representation of the state of the field that is based on a systematic literature search, or rather a subset based on a few papers? What is the quality of the papers included? Are they all peer-reviewed, or did authors also include results from unpublished manuscripts? Second, a well-documented meta-analysis helps to evaluate whether it is relevant to your current interest. For instance, information on when a search was conducted can tell us whether the meta-analysis represents the current state of the field or would need to be updated. Documentation does not only help users, but also creators of a meta-analysis. If you work on a meta-analysis collaboratively, detailed documentation facilitates consistency across multiple contributors. Similarly, documenting all steps beforehand or on the way allows you to keep track of your own steps and to be transparent toward your field and yourself. We will first go through some key components of documentation for reproducibility. First, it is crucial to document your search strategy. What are your sources of information? This could be a database like Google Scholar, but you could also have asked other researchers who are experts on the topic. In case you did a database search, what were the exact keywords you used? And did you contact authors of articles in case you missed some information, or what else was your strategy for dealing with missing data? Second, you should describe your inclusion criteria. For instance, a study could only be eligible if it includes a longitudinal design or if it was published rather recently. Third, make your data gathering process explicit. You might have had a specific strategy to decide on eligibility, for instance, to screen all abstracts that came up from your search. A flowchart of study inclusion and exclusion criteria, as well as a more extensive checklist of aspects to report over the course of a meta-analysis can be found on the PRISMA website. Some of our other videos, e.g. on literature search, will explain in more detail how to keep the different parts of a meta-analysis reproducible. You can document the search process with a decision spreadsheet. You can find an example of such a spreadsheet on the MetaLab website. The spreadsheet will contain all studies that you have judged relevant from screening the title. You add information on where and when you found the studies, whether you screened the abstract and full text, uh, and finally your eligibility decision. It is always a good idea to have columns for notes, uh, where you can, for instance, um, write down why you deemed a paper ineligible. The spreadsheet is also a good place to document your search protocol, uh, such as how, when and where you conducted the search. Finally, you may want to document further steps, like who you contacted or to include instructions for collaborators. Congratulations, you now have a reproducible meta-analysis.